life is more like a goddamn detective story. I was beautiful from birth. Everyone always told me so. I was used to the attention. I was good at everything I did. School, college, work. But who knew that my looks would ever play tricks on me? Listen and see what I went through. It all started in college. Handsome guys kept asking me out one by one, and my roommate Gina kept telling me how lucky I was. We hadn't met before, but she was a good friend. I was glad that she was my roommate. We had no problems at home, we didn't fight, and on the contrary, she was very smart and often helped me with my studies. I was beautiful and was constantly helping her with her looks. Gina at the time had braces, untidy hair, couldn't wear makeup, couldn't dress, and was constantly blaming everything on money. Gina, it's not always about the money. Always and everything. You have a lot of money. You come from a well-to-do family and I don't. That's why I was born ugly. Are you saying that all rich people have beautiful babies? Statistics show that. And I can give you plenty of other examples. How many models in the world come from poor families? At least one in three. But I still can't become one. I'll help you. I take her by the hand, put her in a chair, and make her look pretty. It took us hours, but it was fun. Gina was able to believe in herself. She became more liberated. Then one day, she came home and told me that she had liked this guy for a long time. She asked me to help her with an introduction. How do you want to go about it? Just go up to him, tell him about me, and tell him I want to meet him. Okay, then what? Maybe ask him to go to a cafe? Okay, so that's what I did. I went up to him myself and told him about Gina and invited him to lunch at the cafe. He said yes. There was no limit to her happiness. I got her ready, and then she said, Why are you just sitting there? Me? What about me? Come with us. What are you doing? You don't go on a date in threes. I'm scared. It's my first time. Please. This is stupid, Gina. You go. I can't. Then I'm not going. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not going to get ready. I'll go out without makeup because I'm lazy. Okay. So the three of us went to lunch. It was creepy. Her crush, Luke, kept staring at me and I thought it was because I wasn't wearing makeup. I was uncomfortable. He kept asking me some questions and I didn't answer and then I pretended I had to go and took off. I whispered in Gina's ear to keep her cool and left. It was getting late and my friend was still gone. I was getting worried. She wasn't answering her phone, so I went looking for her. I met her outside our dormitory. She was sitting alone on a bench, crying. Oh my god, Gina, did he hurt you? Did he? What did he say? I'm going to kill him. Don't worry about it. I turned around and sat down next to her. What happened? He said he only went on the date for you, and when you left, he just paid the bill and left. He said I was pretty, but not as pretty as you. He said you're even pretty without makeup, and I'm, and I'm, and she cried bitterly. I felt so sorry for her. I was so angry with him. I wanted to find him and make him apologize to Gina, but she stopped me. She said she would always stay ugly no matter what. I walked her to our room, and then she got hysterical. She started blaming me for introducing them, for going out with her. But you asked me to, Gina. You shouldn't have listened to me. You should have stayed. At least I could have got his attention for a while. He was looking at you the whole time. Do you think I enjoyed that? What's that got to do with me? I didn't hit on him. You asked me to introduce you to him and ask him out. Yes, it's my fault I was poor and ugly. Who told you that? Go away. I need to be alone. Where can I go? It's the middle of the night. Go away or I'll leave. All right, chill out. I'll go for a walk. You should stay home in your state. I went out and went for a walk. I was freezing and came home about two hours later. And the first thing I saw when I entered the room was that Gina was lying on the floor foaming at the mouth, and a bottle of pills were lying next to her. I screamed. It was horrible. The proceedings, the interrogations, it all dragged on for months. It's scary to remember what happened back then. After her funeral, to which I was forbidden to go, I couldn't live any other way. I quit college, dropped out, or rather took a year off, and got a job at a gas station as a cashier. I couldn't look at anything that reminded me of my friend. So another six months passed. Life became gray, boring. Guys at work kept calling me for a date, but I didn't go. I didn't want anything like that. But still, I liked this one guy. 
His name was Tony. He wooed me so well that I couldn't help myself and decided to go out with him for the first time in a long time. Everything was super, and then he offered me a ride home. I was renting an apartment and lived alone not far from work. I said yes, but then I blacked out. I woke up in a different place. My body ached, as did my head. I opened my eyes and saw that I was in an incomprehensible, dark room. Where am I? What's going on? New girl, are you okay? I got up from the floor and saw two other girls in front of me. They were in identical pajamas, tired, disheveled. Who are you? What have you done to me? I'm Amber, and this is Carol. What's your name? Alice. Welcome, Alice, to the prison for hotties. What? What's this nonsense? Tony brought you here, too, just like us. The damn hottie lures the pretty girls to a special prison. What? But why? He's sick. Maybe has complexes. He said he's going to raise an army of pretty girls. For what? To make us ugly, and he's good at it. They starve us here. They don't let us go to the bathroom. I've been here three weeks. Carol, too. You're the new girl. The stress is really making us look bad. What the hell? Where are the police? Where are your parents? We live away from our folks. I bet you do, too. He doesn't want any trouble right now. I think he'll execute his plan and let us go. The only question is how he'll execute it. And what does he do? What does he want with us? He says he'll let us go as soon as we're scarier than death. The jerk. What is this place? It looks like somebody's home. He sealed the windows. There are two rooms, a kitchen, and a bathroom. He's controlling our every move. You're wearing a bracelet. He controls it through remote control, and it shocks you all over your arm. It hurts, but if you obey him, everything will be fine. Fine? Are you kidding me? Nothing's fine. We're being held hostage by a psycho. I've been through a lot, and I've adapted. Do you think I haven't tried to escape? I tried everything. Took off this anklet, attacked him, seduced him. Nothing works. He's sick and determined. So, should we just stay here? Apparently so. He's waiting for something. I think until he gets everyone on his list. What list? He's got a book of names. These are the girls he wants to disfigure. Where's the book? Always with him. I tried to steal it too, but it didn't work. And then he came in. I jumped at him, but he pressed the remote and I was electrocuted. It hurt. I fell on the floor and yelled at him that he was crazy, but he just laughed. You girls haven't eaten today. I brought you burgers. That's how you want us to get fat, you freak. Sure, I'll do anything for your beauty. Eat your food and be glad I'm feeding you. Sometimes. And then he was gone. Life seemed like hell. Every day he came to us, watched us, abused us, forced us not to sleep, beat me with electric shocks, did not give us water, fed us dry food. Sometimes we weren't even allowed to go to the toilet. Several days passed like that. I noticed he had a book in the back pocket of his pants, and I also figured out that his remote control only worked from a short distance. That meant he was around most of the time, and if that was the case, how was he looking for his victims? Something didn't add up. Then I figure that there must be someone else out there helping him. Maybe that someone is sitting there watching them, and he's working for him. I found the one blind corner the camera couldn't catch. It was in the kitchen. One day Tony came by and brought us some soap, bleach soap, to wash the house. That's when I came up with a plan. I technically told the girls about it, and we decided to take a chance. While we were scrubbing the floors, I did the job first. And then I stood in the middle of the room and fell to the floor in convulsions, started beating and foaming at the mouth. The girl started a panic and a commotion. After a while, Tony came running in. He was confused too. The girl said I had too much chlorine. He sat down next to me, tried to turn me on my side. At that moment, Carol pulled the book out of his pocket and then yelled for an ambulance. He said he'd think of something and ran off. I was lying supposedly unconscious on the floor. Carol went into the blind spot and watched the camera. Amber played it cool, started hitting dishes like she was going crazy, and kind of accidentally knocked the camera over with a plate. The connection was gone. I got up off the floor, grabbed the book, and hid it in my underwear. And when Tony ran in, I hit him on the head and he passed out. We managed to run outside. I realized we were somewhere in the woods. Tony's car! 
We rushed over there, but suddenly all three of us were electrocuted. I turned around and saw her in front of me. Gina? Hi, beautiful. Wanted to escape? Tony woke up and they dragged us back into the house. Gina told me that she had started to plan her revenge on all the hotties in the world since that failed date. That's a clever idea about the bleach, only I used it before you did. So you set this up? And your funeral? There wasn't one. You were easy to fool. The right people did their job. I'll make you into someone no one will ever fall in love with. You won't get away with this. You'll kill us and the police will find you. And who said I was going to kill you? I'll just drive you crazy. Amber tried to jump her, but she got electrocuted again. And I noticed that the remote was in her hand. So I asked for her pity. I said I'd do anything to get her to let the girls go. Gina was relieved. Shave your head and Tony will fix your face. Tony was getting some scary tools ready. The girls started talking me out of it, but I said yes. If it's about me, don't let them suffer. It's okay, I'll get you myself. I always dreamed of it. Tony, go to the store and get some antiseptic. She came over to me and cut my hair bald with a machine. I cried, but I held on. When she finished contentedly, I stood up abruptly and pushed her with my bound hands. At this point, Carol pinned her down with a chair, and Amber pulled the remote out with her foot and crushed it. I managed to free my hands with knives left on the table. We tied her up, and just as Tony arrived, Carol knocked him out again. We tied them both up and took them to the police. Her book was in evidence. They also seized the camera tapes. They've been put in jail for a long time. It's been a year since then. The girls and I are going out to celebrate the day we were freed. My hair has grown back. Our lives have gotten better. Who would have thought such a story would happen just because of a bad date?